Hi everyone and welcome to another short video that wasn't planned. Um, what we have here is my um, flatbed uh, tape recorder or cassette player from the 80s, an original item I bought uh, a few years ago and I've been using this to, in order to load tapes, original format, to my 8-bit uh, micros and conduct some testing or um, playing some games from cassettes. Um, I have quite a few of them and I really like from time to time to uh, load the original cassettes and um, remind, reminds me actually how it used to do it, how it used to be in the past. But of course, um, although it is in great condition uh, and it was from day one, that's why I, I bought it, uh, it came in um, uh, original packaging uh, with this little leaflet uh, of instructions and um, there is also a schematic diagram at the back so in overall good condition uh, although it was second hand um, but uh, it works just fine or used to work just fine but remember all these things are coming from like the 80s like 40 years old equipment and so they are prone to failure and um, uh, what I'm, I need to do now is to uh, change the belt after uh, two or three years that I've been using this. Um, I didn't change the belt uh, by the time I bought it, so now the time has come. And also I had a problem with the contacts on the um, uh, ear uh, plug, which is on the side, so the sound was uh, uh, giving me interruptions so for the time being I cannot load a game a cassette um, onto the computer so it's not only that uh, I like the, the the games in original format and all that uh, it's a, a matter of uh, the right way to test it or something that you want to say that is intact in original condition your computer uh, has no damage the IO um, circuitry. Uh, so at this point it's not only loading games or testing your machine but it's essential because even if you have bought a machine which actually boots up, powers up, doesn't mean that all the rest of the circuit is working fine. Um, so we need to test several things uh, like the I.O. Uh, connection to the tape recorder like the way it used to be uh, and then you can consider this as a uh, successful uh, purchase after all. Uh, but until then, you have to somehow connect it to uh, an old school retro cassette player or tape recorder, like we used to say, like this one. So I, I think um, these are coming very cheap uh, these days, and um, I think it's worth it if you can get one. Some of those old home micros came uh, with their own uh, data recorder or data set like this one from Commodore uh, as a standard but uh, not all of the models and uh, they are so popular even today that you can find remakes and special editions uh, brand new fully compatible with your old uh, existing equipment okay let's go back to our old school tape recorder from the 80s now as we have an operation to perform here uh, we can see that the belt is terribly loose and it's the one that is the kind of flat um, belt going around the big roller the middle roller right over here is the one that is responsible for fast forward and review of the tape and rewind uh, I mean and um, the motor is here that gives the movement across to the other rollers um, you can see the power supply is built in, that's the way they used to make it back in the day, the tr big transformer and um, uh, getting AC and feeding the rest of the circuit with 6 volts a DC. Uh, now we have to change the belt and focus on the problem with a 3.5 millimeter jack. Now one thing we need to pay attention to, and I mean extra attention to, is to get the right belt, the right type of belt, uh, to replace the old one. This this is the old one, and it's a bit uh, stretched, 
and uh, what we should find somewhere here is the same one but just a bit shorter because it's going to be brand new um, and it should be a bit shorter because as I said the old one uh, is already stretched out and um, gives us trouble so I guess this one is the right type and you can find many types uh, sizes and everything the um, flat ones is what we're looking for now but you can find for example let me show you here the um, the other ones which are kind of uh, slim and uh, not rounded not flat uh, but totally different uh, and made for other types of um, uh, cassette players um, from that era but this one is what we're, we're looking for so let's go ahead with it and of course the second thing you should uh, uh, take care of is to put the new one into place and make sure that it's straight uh, so it, it's not twisted somehow at any point and you can check it uh, by your hand uh, moving the, uh, the whole mechanism, the whole thing with your finger so that you see that um, the belt is not twisted at any point and um, it works uh, well like it should be uh, you can uh, it's not doesn't look straight to me yet but I should try again right here and make it straight and try again uh, test it with my hand like this moving the motor with my hand and it doesn't look absolutely straight to me still so I think it might need a couple of times to uh, make it straight and test it and see that it goes around smoothly around the uh, rollers so let me do it once again and using my both hands I guess now it slipped again oh so yeah let me do it properly and uh, I'll get back to you in a minute <laughs> And so now I have tested the uh, output uh, with a regular cassette and everything works fine. I have the uh, right output uh, now with a new belt uh, installed. But as I said in the beginning of this video, I'm having problems with the ear connection. Uh, so the uh, jack is kind of loose or something is broken in there. So I cannot get out the output uh, to the computer. Um, and so I found this uh, aftermarket one, the ones that you can easily find uh, these days. But um, of course, it's not; it's the same diameter, but of course, it's not the same uh, socket. So that can be um, soldered onto the board of the um, tape player, like the the existing one. So I have to find a solution how to. Uh, get it connected and what I was thinking is to use wires um, in between the socket and the board and I've, I managed to find three like and also this little one so if I would like to um, uh, replace the remote or the mic um, as well uh, I have the right sockets here but the thing is how can I put the wiring in between uh, remove the old ones and um, connect the wires onto the board and uh, if there is enough uh, space I think it should be uh, enough space uh, to um, hold this construction so I'll <laughs> I will open this again and uh, see what happens because what I was thinking is if this new construction and this new idea with the wires can fit right in the place of this guy here which is the uh, one with the problem uh, the uh, microphone and the remote are working fine so I might skip those two for now because I want to check uh, if I can bring across the cables to the this side to the other part of the case which can hold the um, new uh, sockets with um, um, the uh, ring 
to hold them into place. So I, I should try, I should better try the first um, one, uh, replacing the ear, this, this uh, first one, get the cables across, remove the old uh, socket um, from the board, get the cables across and see if it, sh it can fit, actually if the case can be closed after this whole um, new uh, operation and this <laughs> kind of my own design. So let's see. And in the meantime I have removed the, this guy, the broken socket from the board. Uh, it was right there, one, two, three points of contact uh, removed and um, I, as you can see it's larger so this gives me the idea that the new one uh, which is going to be placed onto this other part of the case will fit right underneath the board uh, just fine. Uh, this red one uh, needs to be uh, in contact with the speaker so it needs to be right there in the middle. I have cleaned the contacts and I'm ready to get the cables across from these points to the new uh, uh, socket which is right here. Uh, I have already prepared the first two um, cables. I need an, an, uh, another one, the third one, uh, but I needed to check the length of the cables and I needed to check now the orientation, how this would be better at vertical or horizontal uh, position. And the cables are good enough to reach the board and so if uh, in the future I need to open this up again I can place the bottom part on the side and uh, have all the freedom to work with the rest whatever I need to do. And as I said I'm going to skip the RAM and the MIG for now. Um, I'll be checking if the how, how the new um, socket uh, for the ear should uh, fit and then I should follow up with um, another operation and remove the other two as well. Now I put some music on. I put a tape the tape is playing um, now because I wanted to check uh, the connection. Uh, I have placed the uh, uh, three wires uh, onto the board, uh, connected, uh, soldered in place, and I think uh, it looks great. I have twisted the cables to save some space and to avoid any interference if possible, just because the, this socket is right next to the transformer surprisingly enough. Uh, that's bad design um, after all. And I think it should be placed like horizontally um, in the end. Um, now um, right there. So I, if the case can be closed and f uh, firmly we're, we're good to go. To go. Um, now um, what I wanted to point out here is the third step which is essential and important is to check that now that the music is playing coming from the speaker uh, we need to take a headset and um, uh, connect the headset to check that absolutely gets uh, precedence over the speaker and then if we uh, disconnect the headset the speaker um, uh, gets the sound back again. And uh, there is a nice um, way to understand uh, the connections made through stereo or mono jacks and how they work. Over the this uh, website I'm going to put the link in the comment section and uh, this is very useful uh, for us, for you to understand, for me to understand uh, how the uh, stereo jack, the mono jack and everything uh, works um, so in such a way that whenever the headset is connected uh, it takes over from the speaker and vice versa when the um, uh, headset is disconnected the speaker takes uh, precedence uh, over the headset again. So uh, now we are fine. Um, I've checked everything, put everything back. Uh, it fits nicely. 
it looks great. You can tell the difference. Uh, we have a new ear socket. The MIG and the uh, RAM can wait. Uh, at some other point in time, I might be able to uh, replace those two as well. So I'm very happy and pleased with this. Um, uh, I can load some games over uh, tonight. Uh, my ZX Spectrum <laughs> will be also happy, I guess. Um, I put here the old socket just for the reference and um, to get um, new ones if I ever have the chance to. Um, so yeah, uh, it looks great. I'm happy. Uh, that was um, quite some restoration. We fixed everything tonight. Uh, the belt, the socket, everything works fine. I'll be able to load games again. And um, uh, if you like this video, please uh, consider subscribing. As I'm getting back to my old tapes, a whole bunch of them waiting to be loaded. If you like this stuff uh, and if you feel like uh, uh, 8-bit uh, era has never disappeared uh, and denies to die, uh, then give us a thumbs up if you will. And um, I promise I can uh, catch you soon with another video, another restoration demo uh, from that era. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much. Bye for now.